The outbreak of COVID-19 globally has had profound effects on the world economies, thereby affecting all facets of people's lives. The health sector has been hit hard. Sexual reproductive health is one such area that has been adversely affected by the COVID-19 outbreak, as more and more resources are being channeled towards fighting the pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, sexual and reproductive health rights encompass efforts to eliminate preventable maternal and neonatal mortality and morbidity to ensure quality sexual and reproductive health services, including contraceptive services, and to address sexually transmitted infections, STIs and cervical cancer, violence against women and girls, and sexual and reproductive health needs of adolescents. Universal access to sexual and reproductive health is essential in the achievement of sustainable development and realization of human rights. In Zimbabwe, legal and policy provisions on sexual and reproductive health services include Section 76.1 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, which states that Every citizen and permanent resident of Zimbabwe has the right to have access to basic health care services, including reproductive health care services. The city of Harare has a mandate to provide primary health care to the residents of Harare and surrounding areas. In its health centers, it offers maternity services, that is antenatal care, booking and follow-up visits, prevention of mother-to-child transmission program, delivering postnatal care. The city also offers visual inspection of the cervix using acetic acid and cervicography, VIAC, for screening of cancer of the cervix. It offers family planning services at the health institutions. In 2015, with support from the UNFPA and government, City of Harare broadened the scope of its services and opened a 24-hour sexual gender-based violence clinic at Wilkins Hospital and another one at Edith Opperman Clinic. From the scope of services that are being offered, the city is actively involved in the promotion of sexual reproductive health rights. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought with it challenges which have resulted in the city limiting the scope of its services. During public health emergencies, human and financial resources are diverted from various health programs to respond to the infectious disease outbreak. Sexual and reproductive health services are being impacted by the pandemic. City Health Director Dr. Prosper Chonzi explains more on the services that are offered. We are primarily, primarily a service deliver that offers primary health care, but we are saying we want to redefine what is now being packaged as primary health care. For now, I think primary health care is seen mostly as a rudimentary sort of health care where you just go to a clinic, you need a bandage that is applied, you get better in, and that is it. We have said we want to redefine that whole package of primary health care to include things that people would be going outside Harare or outside Zimbabwe to look for. Uh, we want to reverse uh, medical tourism sort of. You remember, we also want, we have already zoned certain areas in Harare, a special economic zones for, for, for health care, where we're going to be having uh, a city centre maternity uh, hospital, for example, where everything to do with maternal health and child health is, is dealt with there. So we are saying, in terms of centres of excellence, we don't want to have just one centre of excellence. We would rather have centres of excellence in different aspects and place those in the various suburbs to increase access. We don't want everybody to be moving from, uh, say, Headcliffe or Kwazana, coming into town in search of excellence. We want to have a health facility within two kilometres of any individual in any suburb. Uh, we want to be constructing clinics around the suburbs, um, satellite clinics, family health service centres, polyclinics, and above all, we want to build clinics of this magnitude in Mavuku, which are what we call enhanced polyclinics, where all the services that one would require in, in the communities will be provided at that particular clinic. So we are talking of um, management of minor illnesses, management of more complicated illnesses, management of all issues to do with maternal and child health or basic reproductive health, mental health issues, chronic conditions, those that need to have special investigations done like uh, x-rays, radiology services, ultrasound scans, 
dental services, uh, laboratory services, those are all done within the confines of one uh, Jura war. Like many other sub-Saharan African countries, Zimbabwe bears a heavy burden of high maternal, neonatal and child mortality when compared to countries in other regions of the world. The lockdown that was imposed in March resulted in challenges, particularly for women, as they faced travel restrictions like everyone else, while at the same time service providers closed early in line with COVID-19 protocols. Maternal mortality has been recognized as a public health problem in developing countries. Maternal deaths arise from many factors, including poor quality care from health services, risks attributable to pregnancy and childbirth, Kebbing maternal mortality is one of the top priorities of the city of Ferrari. Sister in charge at Edith Opperman Clinic, Sister in Violeta Wilson, explains the maternal health services on offer. We are Edith Opperman Maternity. We are housed at Marie Polyclinic, which is divided into three sections. The curative side, where we diagnose and treat, and we also offer air treatment. We also offer services like preventive services, where we do growth monitoring and immunization, and we also have the maternity department, which is here where we are, where we offer antenatal clinic services. And when we are doing antenatal care services, we do things like PMTCT program, where we are preventing children from having to contract HIV from their mothers, and also we give the ART treatment. And then after that, we meet the women in the labor where we do the intrapartum care. We look after the woman who is laboring and thereafter we do the postnatal care. Approximately we deliver about 25 babies per day, which gives us an average of about 500 babies per month and also about close to 70 babies are delivered at home and they come within 24 hours. It is the only maternity unit in the southern district we accommodate patients from all over, for example, from Wopley, from Waterfall, Sunningdale, Hatfield, Brayside. They all come here. This is their delivering clinic. So when they book there, they are referred here for, for delivery. But we also cater for other patients from different areas. You find patients from Kwadzana, from Glenview, from Budiriro, they come here. And we also have patients from the, the peri urban areas. They also come to deliver here. And sometimes we also have patients from outside the, the country, for example, from Botswana, from South Africa, because of the bus terminal. We get buses from all over, from all the other countries coming to Tumbari. We are strategically located. We are very accessible. City of Harare offers comprehensive sexual and reproductive health services, as explained by Dr. Talent Vochera, a medical officer at Wilkins Hospital. We then go to the genital urinary clinic where we manage complicated genital urinary diseases for both males and females. In that clinic, we also provide um, visual inspection um, with acetic acid for females and it's open to the whole of Harare city. We also have a sexual and gender-based violence clinic in that department where we see uh, survivors of uh, sexual and gender-based violence. And we also see um, patients um, known as the key populations of Zimbabwe in that clinic. We then go to the next building where we have our new start center where we offer um, provider-initiated testing and counselling of HIV and also volunteer testing. In that clinic, we also offer family planning with um, providing all the forms of family planning, including no plant insertion, uh, Jadel, Depo, and also oral con um, contraceptives. From there, we go to our wards where we admit. We admit basically the infectious diseases such as tuberculosis, multi-drug um, resistant TB. We have an Ebola isolation unit, and we also admit um, uh, patients with opportunistic infections for stabilization. Then we move on to the next building where we offer which is our opportunistic infections clinic 
and in there it's a center of excellence where we provide antiretroviral treatment and therapy to patients living with HIV. We see both um, uh, uh, children, adolescents and adults. We have a center for adolescent care for HIV and we offer all the basic tests that are needed including viral load testing and um, initiation of ART. In the current state of worldwide chaos around the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact on girls' and women's sexual and reproductive health rights is not making any headlines, but the reality is that the crisis will have a truly devastating impact on the future of millions of girls and young women. Amid a pandemic that is straining even the most robust healthcare systems, there's a real risk that these rights will move even further from reach. With the lockdown leading to a shadow pandemic of gender-based violence, information and services that protect and promote girls and young women's sexual and reproductive health rights are more vital than ever. According to the latest projections, some 47 million women may be unable to use modern contraceptives if the lockdown persists. This means up to 7 million unintended pregnancies with thousands of young lives at risk. Having realized the challenges of accessing health services in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, Gender Links partnered with the city of Ferrari in an outreach campaign together with the Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services to raise awareness on the need to prioritize sexual reproductive health services. <laughs> The campaign targeted selected high density areas in Harare because of the peculiar challenges in those communities. Hopley was chosen because the population of this suburb is approximately 200,000 people, with about 65,000 aged between 10 to 24 years. Young people in the suburb face challenges such as limited economic opportunities, teenage pregnancies at 18%, and child marriages at 21%. At least 70% of the girls are mothers at 24 years. Edcliffe, which was also targeted, is a sprawling suburb in Narare with a lot of informal settlements. Young people in the area also face serious challenges, almost similar to those in Harare South. The campaign was also taken to Mavuku Tafara, which encompasses townships that include Old Mavuku and New Mavuku. Mavuku Tafara suburbs have been seriously affected by the decline of the economy and face service delivery challenges. The campaign therefore sought to provide information to women and girls on the importance of sexual reproductive health rights even during the pandemic, the ways and means to reduce vulnerability, information on the referral pathway system that can be utilized in the event of a violation, lobbying health authorities to pay particular attention to sexual reproductive health rights issues even when the country is facing a serious public health emergence, and advocate for the continued maintenance of antenatal and postnatal care in all suburbs and the establishment of dedicated facilities. The lockdown imposed on Zimbabwe increased the exposure of women to gender-based violence, in particular domestic violence and sexual violence. Some of the men interviewed admitted that the lockdown has caused many problems, especially among families, as they spend more time together. <laughs> Women have been hit hard by the lockdown. 
Mrs. Judith Majambe, a Heathcliff resident, noted that the city of Harare is making efforts to ensure that women have access to sexual and reproductive health services through mobile awareness campaigns. Ms. Grace Dende, the founder of Headcliff Market, said advice for young women on family planning issues. John Kazingi is the Cliff Market's chairman, welcomed the education and awareness program by Gender Links and City of Harare, noting that the information that was being disseminated could help women and even couples to make informed decisions of their sexual health. Yeah, the campaign also touched on the abuse of young boys and girls with messaging focusing on prevention. Sister Mungate of Hope Literary Clinic said the clinic offers comprehensive health services and VIAC for women is offered for free. She said cancer is aware of the challenges facing women and girls and the sexual and reproductive health issues are dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. To know it's a consultation, the treatment, no kupa, mishonga, no kata do clinic, to know it's HIV testing and counseling, to know tanga van kam shonga, shiva ita follow up, shita me paira or lot, to know it all foot in my services, a candu one day like the artificial inspection with acetic acid screening for cervical cancer, to know it's a growth monitoring, we have a shibayama vaccinations. Chichi to the family planning, Chichi Pam, Mando Zagaita say, my pity to no party, Po, Tinaman, my partners, but not to pass it up, and we have a long ten year thoughts to put our own Zagaita say, Jadel, to know his achieve so good in Manu. On the 11th of March 2020, the World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros Adanom Kribiesas said, All countries must strike a fine balance between protecting health minimizing economic and social disruption, and respecting human rights. This therefore means that when the health systems are overwhelmed, countries need to make tough decisions to balance the demands of responding directly to COVID-19 while engaging coordinated action to maintain essential health service delivery. The message by the Director General of the World Health Organization is very clear. Health authorities must prioritize sexual and reproductive health services for the achievement of sustainable development goals. For Zimbabwe to adequately address the challenges in the promotion of sexual and reproductive health rights, it is important to adopt a comprehensive approach. Zimbabwe must also include programming in cross-cutting elements that is human rights, gender equality, preventing vertical transmission of HIV and stopping violence against women and girls.